Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about the area of equilateral triangles. Now there's several aspects of this I'm going to cover beyond just the basic formula. Don't worry, you'll get that first. We're going to go into it a little more in depth, a little more detail. And I'm going to put links down below where you can jump forward if you're wanting to see a specific subtopic. So first we are going to say what is the shortcut formula for the area of an equilateral triangle and how to use it. Next, I'm going to tell you where this formula comes from, where, why it works, why is it look so, you know, why is it so different from our standard area of a triangle? And then finally, I'm going to show you some alternative methods to find the area of an equilateral triangle. Like say, if you're on the SAT or a test and you're asked to find this area and you can't remember this formula, but you remember the standard formula for area of a triangle. I'll show you how to get there. There's a little work around in those cases because it happens. It does happen with these more unusual or less often used formulas. We forget them. So first here is the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle where each side is the same. That makes it equilateral. And we're calling each side a, the formula is the square root of three over four times a squared. So the way you use this is pretty straightforward. If I am told I have this equilateral triangle and let's say that it has a side of six, I'm going to plug that in for a. So it would be the square root of three over four times six squared. Scoot that over. So six squared is 36. And since 36 is the same as 36 over one. We can treat this like two fractions and we can do some canceling. I have a four on bottom and a 36 on top. They have the common factor of four. Four goes into four one time. It goes into 36 nine times. So I'm left with on top nine times the square root of three on the bottom one times one. So it's just nine times the square root of three and whatever units this was, let's say inches, it would be inches squared. And that would be my area. And that's how you use that formula. All right. Next part, let's go into where this comes from. It looks so different from our normal, our normal formula, our normal one. I say normal the one we use more often is area equals one half base times height. So where did this come from? Well, if I'm calling each side a, then First off, what would be my base? My base would be a. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So one half times a, and now I just need a height. What would the height of this triangle be? All right. So for the height, you would draw an altitude this comes down to that opposite side and makes a right angle. And that would be our height. Well, what is the length of this height? Because it's an equilateral triangle, it's coming straight down. It's dividing that other side into two equal sides. So if this whole side is a, then this little bit right here would be a half of a. Now equilateral triangles, each angle is 60 degrees. So that means that this triangle that I've just created, is a, I have a 90 and I have a 60, so that must be 30. It is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the little shortcut for a 30, 60, 90 triangle, that's 60 and that's 30, our formula that we've probably encountered, and I'm hoping you've encountered before this, this side is x, this side is 2x, and this side is x times the square root of three. This is just one of those shortcut formulas you are encouraged to memorize when you're in geometry and algebra, because it's a lot easier than going through the Pythagorean theorem. You can go through the Pythagorean theorem. It's fine, but this means you don't have to. So following this formula, this bottom leg next to the 60 degrees is my X. So that would be one half a in this case. And to find this side, which corresponds to this leg, I need to multiply it by the square root of three. So that means this side is one half times a, times the square root of three. All right, well, I've got my height. So that goes over here, slide that over. So my height is one half 
times a times the square root of three. Now I'm going to reorder these things. Just use our little commutative property of multiplication, meaning I can change the order. So if I reorder them to make it a little easier to see, I have one half times one half times the square root of three times a times a. And as you can see, we're getting awfully close to this formula up here. First, one half times one half is one fourth multiplying that by the square root of three, and then a times a is a squared. Square root of three times one fourth, we can combine those because that's the same as square root of three over one. So if I multiply those together, I get dun dun dun, square root of three over four times a squared. That's where that formula comes from. It really is just the one half base times height and they're using those unique properties of equilateral triangles to make a shortcut so that we can use any of these sides and we don't have to go through the trouble of calculating the height. As a sort of natural offshoot of this, you can see we were able to calculate the height and that is what you're going to need to do if you are confronted with an equilateral triangle and it's like on a test or the SAT and you do not remember this formula. We don't use it that often. We just don't. We use the one half base times height so much more often. So that's what you are likely to uh, remember. Frankly, that's probably going to be what sticks in your mind more than this square root of three over four times a squared. So let's pretend that you've forgotten that. You've forgotten that specific formula and all you can remember is area equals one half base times height and put some real numbers in here. And let's say each of these sides is six. Well, we know our base because that base is six. It's given. So I have one half times six. I still need my height. The height is going to be that altitude again, that comes straight down and divides this side down here into two identical congruent sides. So half of six is three. So this is three. I'm going to find, I'm going to use this triangle over here to find my height. Now at this point I have, we kind of ignore this half over here. We're just looking at this triangle here. So I have three and I have six and it is a right triangle. So I have two ways to move forward. I can remember my Pythagorean theorem and find out the side that way, or I can use my knowledge of 30, 60, 90 triangles and find out that height the other way. And I'm going to call this height h just to make it you know sort of simple here it's h so first i'm going to have my pythagorean theorem and then here i'm going to do my 30 60 90 and we will get the same uh, length of this height either way so pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared where a and b are the legs or shorter sides of the right triangle and the c is the hypotenuse hypotenuse always being the side that is opposite the right angle. So our hypotenuse here is six and the three that we know can be either a or B. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to put it in for B and then we have our height putting it in there. All right. So H squared plus three squared is nine equals six squared or 36 to get H squared by itself. I'm going to subtract nine from both sides. So I get H squared equals 27. To get H, I then need to take the square root because I am undoing that square. So the square root of both sides gives me H is the square root of 27. You can simplify this because 27 is nine times three and nine is a perfect square. So it can come out and three square root of three. I'm going through that pretty quickly. If you need a refresher on square roots, how to simplify them, I do have a full video on that down below. So I have my height as being three square root of three. Well, let's do our 30, 60, 90 triangle and go through it and see if it matches up. So I'm going to draw this little triangle over here. So I know in an equilateral triangle, these are always 60 degrees. And this is 90, so this up here has to be 30 because the uh, angles, the degrees measure up to uh, 180 in every triangle. So 30, 60, 90. 
And I know this side is six and this side is three. Now my little pattern that I know is that this side is X, this side is two X, and this side is X times the square root of three. Well, if three is my X, then this side must be X square root of three or three times the square root of three. So either way, I get the same answer that the height of this triangle is three times the square root of three. And then I can multiply one half times six is three. Three times three is nine. And the little square root of three stays as it is. And then I always forget to put units. Don't forget to put units <laughs> inches squared. As you can see, I got the same answer as in the previous step when I did this using the direct equilateral triangle area formula. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.